for today's short talk, I'm, I'm going to focus on what we have been talking about, which is talking about trials. And specifically in James, we see that, uh, as, it, as it has been said in the previous verses, that James is talking to the tribes of Israel and telling them that uh, what you should do when trials are happening. Uh, during this time, the, the, the trials of Israel are scattered throughout, and they're suffering, and it's, it takes a moment to tell the, 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 the Christians what to do. One of the biggest questions that uh, Christians will go through, especially when going through trials, is what we should do and, and, and how we should go about doing that. And what I am grateful for, for example, is the, the fact that when I do ask for God for something, that it's not like other religions that we have to take a certain amount of steps, intricacies, and rituals to be able to just to pray to God, and it's not the case here. There is a right mindset, and there is a right uh, place of heart that we should come to God, but it's not that complicated, and that's a good thing. Uh, so for today's short talk, we're going to be focusing on what we should be asking for when we're going through trials and uh, how we should be asking for it. Uh, one of the most important things when going through a trial is asking for wisdom. But uh, how many of us actually do that? Uh, James tells us that, to, that when this is happening, when we're going through trials, to turn to God for wisdom because the alternative is to turn to the world for wisdom. I think too many times where we're, we're something happens in our life, especially as I was younger and I was trying to figure out my way and having mentors help me a lot. But not everyone has that benefit and that blessing to, to have that sometimes. Sometimes we have to figure out things when just going through reading the Bible. But the biggest thing is that there's a tendency to turn away, to turn to other things, to not necessarily go back to the Bible and to the basics and reading the Word of God. So there's that tendency there. And in fact, I mean, that's the reason sort of, not sort of, but why, they, why God inspired James to even write about this because they were suffering that. They were struggling with, the, with, with some doubt. And so what happens? What happens when a Christian turns to the world? Um, for one, prayer tends to take a back seat. And two, we, we seek advice from places that are not necessarily godly. We tend to, and that can be through social media, it can be through non-religious uh, things, and we, we turn to these things, and that can really influence the way we start thinking and start to turn away from God. And, la and third, this is we become double-minded. We start having these influences in our mind, and, and it starts to changing us, our, our thoughts on what really we should be focusing on and what it is that is important. James writes in, in verse 5, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So God, to those who ask, gives without reservation, without reproach. He will give it abundantly. There, there's, there's no holding back. If you, if you ask for it, it, it will be given to you. However, there is, there is another part to that. It's not just asking. It does say in verse 6, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed, uh, tossed by the wind. When I, read that, when, I, when I read that verse, I immediately thought of what Matthew writes to uh, Peter. And, he, and we can see that in Matthew 14, verses 28 to 31. I'm going to read it here. And Peter answered, answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on, uh, come to you on the water. So he said, come, and when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and began to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? So the role they request is to not doubt. But let, said, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. James is not saying that we're never going to doubt. It's why he wrote this message to the Christians during that time. Uh, but you have to be in the right mindset when asking for wisdom, when asking for something of God. And so let's look at one more example of, of, of unwavering faith. And we see that in Romans. And Paul is talking about Abraham here, verses 20 to 21. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And verse 21, and being fully convinced that he had promised, he was, uh, he, excuse me, 21, and being fully convinced of what he had promised, he was able to perform. Asking in faith refers to being fully convinced that what God has promised, he is able to perform. And, and prayer without faith fails because your prayers are done half-heartedly. They're not done with full convic conviction. 
uh, you or the other part of that is that you have little hope <laughs> that if when you do pray, it may happen or it may not happen. It, it's it's never really sure of if God will be able to answer what you're asking Him of. And the other part of that of, of why prayer might fail because because you have uh, you're praying without faith or very little faith is that your in, your interest in God is divided. You are you have one foot in the world and the other in God. And so when perhaps you're, you're at a moment where you're not really decided what it is that you're truly serving. And, and so in summary of all this, there's three things that I really would just to like to keep in mind because it's always helped me out along my journey as, as I still am growing in Christ. Is one, is that when you're going, to, when you're going through a trial in your life, and not, they're not, trials are not always gonna be big. Some trials are, are, are small also. But regardless, is that when you go into uh, through trials, don't turn to the world, turn to God. Two is when you're doing when you when you do pray, ask for wisdom. James tells us to pray for wisdom. It's going to help us to make the discernment, to make the right decisions, to not make decisions that are hasty, to be able to uh, look at things and say, I, I need to back uh, back up for a second and and, and turn to God and, and really take the moment to make a decision what it is important here and how to be able to worship God in the correct way and so that I can be an example for anyone else who's, who's always observing uh, me. And third, it says that when you do pray, when you do pray, you pray for faith. Uh, pray for faith, pray with faith. If you're going to pray, that, that is the only thing that we're required to do is that we just pray with a conviction that it's going to happen, that if we ask for wisdom, that we don't doubt. It's because that's very important that we don't, that we don't do that. 